Let's take a look at number seven and eight on the forces review problems with the coefficient of friction. Number seven, the object below is being pushed to the right as shown in the picture. As a result of the push, it is moving with a constant speed. That's important. We're now going to be trying to find the coefficient of friction acting on the object. Got to make sure we have all of our forces drawn correctly. Normal force is upward. Force of gravity is downward. Our force of push goes down at an angle and friction goes to the left. Numbers given in the problem, the force of push is 40 newtons. There is no acceleration because it's moving at a constant speed. Constant speed means it's not getting faster or slower, so there's no acceleration. And we're trying to find the coefficient. We have a force that's at an angle, so we're gonna find the X and Y pieces of that force, how much I'm pushing to the right, how much I'm pushing down. So we're gonna do X first, just because it's first in the alphabet. That's the adjacent side of this triangle, so I'm going to be using the cosine. And if you take a look at the bottom right-hand corner of your equation sheets, you'll see the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent side, x, over the hypotenuse force of push. I just did a little bit of algebra to that, multiply the hypotenuse out, and I get x equals the cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse, which was given at 40. Once I plug that into my calculator, I get 37.59 newtons for how much you're pushing to the right in the y direction, that's going downward, and uh, that's the opposite side of this triangle. So instead of using cosine, I'm gonna use sine, but besides that, everything is the same. So the y part is the sine of 20 degrees times the hypotenuse, 40 newtons. That tells me I'm pushing downward, 13.68 newtons. In order to find out what the coefficient of friction is, force of friction is the mu times the normal force, we better figure out what that normal force is. Normal force is upward. Force of gravity is downward, but you're also pushing downward. Well, that means that the normal up is going to equal the two forces going down because up stuff equals down stuff, especially when there's no acceleration. Force of gravity is the mass, 10 kilograms times g, 9.8 meters per second squared. And we just solved for the y, which was 13.68 newtons. Plugging that into my calculator, I get 111.68 newtons for the normal force. Now again, since this thing is not accelerating, there is no A. So my right stuff, X, minus my left stuff, friction, equals MA, but A is nothing, so it just equals zero. That means that my right stuff, X, equals my left stuff, which is force of friction. Now what is force of friction? Friction is the coefficient times the normal force. Now I can solve for the coefficient very easily by dividing the normal force over to the other side of my equation. So I have X divided by the normal force equals my coefficient. My X force we solved for it earlier is 37.59 Newtons and my normal force we solved for that is 111.68 Newtons. Once I divide those two, I get the coefficient of 0.34. That's the end of number seven. Now we'll take a look at number eight, it's another multi-block problem. So we have the coefficient of friction between this block and the ramp at 0.38, and we're gonna find the acceleration of this system. As always, we need all of our forces correct. On the hanging block, tension goes up, gravity goes down. The block on the hill, tension goes to the left, force of gravity parallel goes right, force of friction goes right, normal goes up, and gravity perpendicular goes down. The angle is given at 32 degrees. Now I numbered this block number one and I numbered this block number two so that we're doing our equations, you know which equation is going for which block. But since we're using friction, we better figure out what that normal force is. And the normal up has to equal gravity perpendicular down because it's not accelerating in the y direction. And when I plug into my equation for gravity perpendicular, I get cosine of 32 times the mass, which is eight times G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. That gives me a normal force of 66.49 newtons. Now I'm going to come up with my equation for each block. Block number one. Well, first, let's make sure that we know which way is positive and negative. I said clockwise is positive and counterclockwise is negative, meaning that the tension force on block number one is pulling in the clockwise direction. So tension is positive. Force of gravity one goes in the other direction. So that's going to be negative. I'm out of forces going in the acceleration direction on number one block on in this question. So that's gonna equal M times A. For number two, gravity parallel pulls down the hill, friction pulls down the hill. They're both positive because those are pulling 
in the positive direction and tension is in the other direction so that is minus and that's going to equal the mass of that block times acceleration. I'm going to add these two equations together because it's a simultaneous equation and my tensions will cancel. One is positive, one is negative and I just keep everything else. Friction and gravity parallel, both positive. Gravity 1 is negative, so it remains negative. It's minus gravity 1. And that's going to equal the two MAs added up. This equation stays pretty much exactly the same, except I factor out the accelerations. And I turn friction into the coefficient times the normal force, because that's what friction is. I'm going to divide by the masses that are in my parentheses here after I factor out my A. And that's why they're in the denominator now. Plugging in my numbers, my coefficient was given at 0.38. My normal force we solved for, 66.49 newtons. Gravity parallel, we have an equation for that, which is the sine of 32 degrees times the mass, 8 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared. And force of gravity is mass, 9 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared. All that divided by the two masses added together, which is 9 and 8, and that's going to give us an acceleration of negative 1.26 meters per second squared. Negative just means that this block is going to go up the hill as this hanging block falls down.